uh, but they do us a favor by uh, uh, telling us to, we can shorten it to Abridged human, version. sexual rights, and family values bill. Mm. I, I, I don't want us to be saying anti-LGBTQI because okay. according to Mr. Moses Fuamwini, it's actually the the injection of the the foreign press and, and their propaganda machinery to say, okay, this is anti-LGBTQIA plus okay. GPU of TUC. Here's John Mahama. He's the NDC's flag bearer going into the 2024 elections. The question was put to him as to whether he would um, endorse LGBTQI or not. And, and prior to that, you had heard the former president, the late Professor Mills, who says that, look, do not attach, and you cannot come and dictate to us how we live our lives here. Also, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, former Speaker of Parliament, when he was Speaker of Parliament, says, look, IMF, World Bank, disassociate yourself and try to... Um, redefine what human rights mean. Don't try and, you know, put these two together because it will not inure to our benefit. Here's Joe Mahama. Listen to him. Me, me GD, my faith is against LGBTQ. Me, Assemblies of God, me. If we say, the faith I have, empony say, Bema, Bewari, Bema, Oba, Bewari, Oba. Bele war parliament, Omunyam Pasi, but I'm um, saying, I buy actually say so. I'm pass here, President on sign. If he say, the Attorney General, I can say, be be a year private, private members motion. Obey me, I pass a bill with a private members motion. But in this, a decabia, a better, a bind so. And based on that technicality, President Assignment say, say, by on signing. In terms of idea between Parliament and the Executive. Omoche na omokan. Ebi a ebi a some better bill numa. No matter ebi a it puts a charge on government. Na omoye no ifriwa. Then it opens the way for the president to be happy to sign the agreement. And so me personally, Benjin they say, and I I a man is a man, a woman is a woman. Me believe he said nipa. What me a sorry I can say. Me feeli wo me muse me oba. And so you will be my intimate because the sun, no matter your bar, they be. I mean, nature created as man and woman. And Yame Boyano, he knew what he was doing when he created us like that. And so if you ask me, my personal faith is against it. That's John Dramani Mahama. He stated his position. He's not entirely happy about it. But there's also uh, Professor Gajako. Who thinks that the law as it has been passed now, or the bill, uh, rather I should say, as it's been passed now, is obnoxious? Listen to her. Presentations at the memo stage to Parliament, we've made um, submissions in the media, right. pointing out why this is such an obnoxious and dangerous bill mm -hmm. for our democracy and for human rights not only for LGBTQ people, even though the bill is targeted at them, but the implications that they have for other human rights of minorities, as well as even rights about freedom of expression, freedom for the media. Mm -hmm. So we've made those submissions, but it looks like it fell on deaf ears. And we sort of are disappointed that parliament didn't take it seriously. We know that there was a lot of pressure within Parliament because of the way the issue was framed. Mm -hmm. So even those who know the dangers of the bill couldn't come out against the bill. A mm -hmm. lot of human rights organizations also sent memorandum and appeared before Parliament. Parliament. That is true. But our points were not taken into consideration. They went through periods where they took out issues that we had raised about the bill, some issues but the main substance of criminalizing sexual identity remains. Mm -hmm. Criminalizing speech mm -hmm. remains. And that's where the danger is for, let's say, the media. Professor Audrey Gajipo, board chairman of the Center for Democratic Development, joining us on the phone line now is the forerunner for the uh, proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill as has been passed now, waiting for presidential accents. You do know now that the president has said that uh, there's some challenge that has been mounted at the Supreme Court, and so we should hold our horses and wait for the Supreme Court. Sam Nate George 
is the man we're talking about. He's the member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram constituency. He's also an elder of the church at Perez Chapel. Sam, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning to our listeners. Apologies, I'm not yet in the studio. Great. The traffic is heavy. I'm trying to get to the studio. We appreciate that you could speak to us. Now, Sam, I'm sure that you had heard the, the president's response to the growing pressure that is mounting on the presidency to say, uh, finish what parliament has started. Ketsi, you and your colleagues who sponsored this bill. Uh, how do you react to the president's uh, call on all of us to hold our horses, wait for the Supreme Court before he does anything? How do you respond to that? It's extremely disappointing, extremely heartbreaking. And it's a complete shame that the president is more interested in in pleasing the so-called friends of Ghana and not the people of Ghana who voted for him. At the end of the day, we must ask ourselves a very simple question. Who voted for the president? His friends, the so-called friends of Ghana, or the people of Ghana? The president's position, the president's position is, is not based in law. It is, it is legally hollow. And, and, and just smacks of desperation. How the president can say that a case was filed yesterday in court, and for that reason he thinks that he would stay his accent, um, maybe the president is not aware that last year, when parliament was considering this case, mm. in, I think, June, let me just be sure of the exact day, right. in, in, on the 19th of July, the Supreme Court, a nine-member panel of the Supreme Court, sat on an injunction case brought by one Dr. Odoy, Amanda Odoy, and her team. Right, right. The, the Supreme Court, to injunct Parliament, to stop Parliament from proceeding on the matter, the Supreme Court, led by the Chief Justice herself, Geoffrey Tokono, in a 9-0 unanimous decision, threw out that injunction and said that, one, there was no basis to injunct Parliament from carrying out its function, and that the, the applicant had failed to establish what rights of theirs was going to be impeded by the actions of Parliament. Hmm. Now, the question we should ask ourselves, the Supreme Court is always invited to give clarity and interpretation to legal matters as have been determined by Parliament. Right. by way of legislation. Right. As we speak, the legislative process is not completed. So what is the Supreme Court going to hear in this new case? Is the Supreme Court going to be sitting and interpreting the constitutionality or otherwise of a bill that has not become law yet? So when the president says he's not accenting, does he realize and is he aware that his accent or communication officially to Parliament with a reason within 14 days to say, I will not accent, as part of the legislative process. Mm. And so this process is still within the, 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 the remit of Parliament. And so, I mean, the Supreme Court in a 9-0 ruling less than a year ago threw out a similar application. Why does the, why, why, why does the president think that that should be the basis. But let's not forget that the mm. same president right. went ahead to sign the e-levy into a give presidential accent to the e-levy uh, bill when there was a pending Supreme Court case against it. Oh, that's right. Mm. This president went ahead to terminate the appointment of Dom Levo when there was a Supreme Court case pending against him. Mm. Because everybody knows that you cannot injunct the president in the performance of a constitutional function. When he is going to perform his constitutional mandate, you cannot injunct him. That's right. What you can do is after he's carried out that function, if you think that his actions are contrary to the dictates of the constitution, you can go and seek redress from the courts. So, I mean, this whole legal shenanigan from a man who said the battle was the Lord, mm. from a man who pledged before the clergy that LGBTQ will not happen under his watch, 
there is no greater tool to, to curbing the menace and scourge of LGBTQ than signing this bill into law. But no, no. again, mm. do we see rhetoric and empty words from the president? Mm. And you know, in the coming days, we would begin to interrogate the real reason, the economic mm-hmm. and family reasons why the president is refusing to accent to this bill. And let me be clear, mm-hmm. very clear here. Mm-hmm. The president's position cannot be said to be the position of even a political party. Mm. Because the NPP national chairman, at a meeting with Eji during their Thanksgiving ceremony in December last year, stated emphatically that the MPP as a political party is opposed. Is opposed mm, mm. to the act of LGBTQ. Right. In fact, we've had members of the, the, in fact, the then leader saying that the entire parliament, my mm. majority side, mm. is behind and supporting our bill. Mm. The deputy general secretary of the NPP is on record to have said that they support the bill. Right. Members, leading members of the NPP have called for the president to sign this bill. So this is not about NDC or MPP. This is about Mr. William Nana Adodankwa Akufuado and what his personal interest is in not allowing the bill come to light. And you should know that he's going to be standing against the sovereign will of the Ghanaian people who voted him to, to serve the whims and caprices of his friends, not the friends of Ghana. Because the friends of Ghana will not insist that Ghana should sell her cultural heritage, her cultural identity, mm. and her values for mere pittance, $700 million a year. The, the, no the, true friend will do that to us. I see. So, the, there are concerns also that have been raised by the Ministry of Finance uh, stating for us the impact on the World Bank-funded uh, Projects and, and they give us a list of six things that uh, could happen if we are not too careful about this. Earlier, I played the voice of former Speaker of Parliament, uh, Professor Michael Quay, who had told the World Bank and the IMF not to uh, mix the two issues because they are totally different, that they should not redefine what human rights are. This is a finance minister, brand new finance minister, a Muslim uh, for that matter, and his religion abhors this. But in his official capacity, this is the advice he has put out there that, well, go ahead, sign, but this will be the consequence if you sign. What do you say? I am shocked at my big brother, Amin Anta, and I've known the Honorable Amin Anta since 2007. I know him to be a practicing Muslim, and I know what his personal position, in conversations that we've had on the floor of parliament and in the corridors of parliament, I know what his personal position is. Mm. on this matter. So I am shocked that he would come up with this as his advice. Clearly, I mean, you know, the flag bearer, Dr. Mm. Mahmoud Baumia, who is mm. also a practicing Muslim, mm. has gone deaf and dumb on this matter, like he did on e Look, let me state emphatically that the World Bank and the IMF have not communicated the things that the Ministry of Finance has put out in any official communication. I am daring the Ministry of Finance mm. and the Honorable Amin Anta to publish, since they've been able to put out in public what they, they've put out, I'm daring them to publish the official communication from the IMF and the World Bank that says that we will not get those, that, those, those credit supports because of the bill. There is no such official communication. So it is persons within the Ghana government system who are trying to please whichever paymasters they have that are painting this picture. The IMF, I'm stating this on record, the IMF, as of this morning, Mm -hmm. my last check this morning, has not written either in a letter or an email or in a phone call to anybody at the Ministry of Finance Mm -hmm. saying that they would withhold the $300 million, neither has the World Bank written or sent an email saying that they will withhold $250 million to Ghana. I am daring the finance ministry to publish those letters. I see. Because they are matters of public interest. Mm-hmm. If they have received any such communication, and I'm, I'm, today's date is the 5th 
of March. Right. It is 8.39 a.m. Mm. I am daring them to from any of the IMF or the World Bank that speaks to these issues and says that they are going to withhold. These are issues being created by Ghanaians who are seeking to serve a certain parochial interest, Johnny. And we must begin to call them and ask them, how much is the innocence of Ghanaian children? Because, listen, this whole thing is about the, protecting the innocence of our children. We must begin to ask the, the, the officers in the government mm -hmm. who are seeking to serve the whims and caprices of the, of the gay lobby. We must begin to ask them, how much is the innocence of Ghanaian children? How much is Ghana's cultural heritage? Is it worth $700 million a year? Is that really what it is worth? You must begin to answer. I see. Now, there's, uh, there's also the concern about the timing of the statement from the president that this was just two days away from Ghana's 67th Independence uh, Day celebration. It will be the last for him as president, uh, his eighth celebration. Do you think that the timing was right? You know, yesterday my attention was drawn to my attention was drawn to my attention was drawn to the fact that inadvertently, you know, this bill was passed on the 28th of February. 28th February. Do you remember what date 28th February is in our history? Hello, Johnny. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. 28th February. Yes, the crossroads, it, uh, Sergeant Sajete Corporal Atiko. Yes. Mm. And that was, that was what triggered Ghana's independence. That's right. The 1947 Movement. disturbances leading My to 48 My mind never went to it. It was just sheer coincidence. Mm. But maybe God is telling us something as a nation. That on the 28th of February 2024, once again, Ghana seeks or seems to be gaining opportunity to mm -hmm. start a setting independent march. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. It may take us 10 years to get there, mm -hmm. but we've we started that journey. It is telling mm -hmm. that the president, two days away from Ghana's independence, right. is talking about supposed friends of Ghana. Now, Johnny, I don't know the kind of friends you have, and I don't know the kind of friends President Akufuado keeps. Mm. But my friends, they don't blackmail me. Mm. My friends don't blackmail me. My friends don't ask me to change who I am mm. to serve their purposes. And so if the president is saying that the friends of them mm. are his consideration and he's giving them assurances, the people of Ghana must advise themselves. Mm. on what is more important, the friends of the president or the people of Ghana? You know? Mm. So these this are the real questions we have to ask ourselves. And, and Johnny, I, I'm just walking into your premises, mm -hmm. so right. I will walk straight in and join right. you. Okay, yeah. all right, that's fine. And uh, Honorable Sam Jetta George will join us in a bit here, but the, uh, we're also live on Facebook at 3FM927. And uh, you can always join us with your thoughts and comments. And uh, a while ago, Honorable Sam George mentioned this. I, should, I thought I should let you in on this. Listen. Oh, is the law. In truth, in truth, fellow Ghanaians, we are many and they are few. And the battle remains the Lord's. So this was the president, the battle is the Lord's. Now, you've, you've made some very instructive points in the last few minutes. Professor Audrey Gajeko is also the board chair of the Center for Democratic Development. Professor Gajeko is respected, you know, in, in terms of advocacy, etc. Professor H. Kwisi Prempe, who also sits at the top of the... CDD yesterday put on Facebook that I support this 100% human sexual rights and family values levy to be imposed on all religious organizations to make up for any fiscal shortfall in government of Ghana receipts flowing from passage of the anti-LGBTQ bill. Talk is cheap. First, he goes at the church and religious organizations, but they're also stating their stance against this uh, proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill. What do you say to the CDD and their leadership? 
Well, I'll, I'll put this on record that the CDD's advocacy is financial. Mm. I mean, they... It's, what, it's, what they're doing is influenced by what they're getting from somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all about money. And I, I said this on another platform with mm. Michael, I think a cargo or something, right, right. who is a head of social protection or something at the mm. CDD. Mm. And he couldn't deny it. The CDD is funded. That's right. They're funded by... And the, this advocacy... All the work they've done with the gay lobby, mm. the so-called group of 18, they are Ghana's gay lobby. Mm. I mean, it's funded by the gay lobby and pro-LGBTQ groups mm -hmm. in the U.S. They can run away from it. So let people not think mm -hmm. that the CDD is doing an altruistic job and that, and that uh, Professor Gajipo mm. is interested in doing academic research. This right. is financial. It's financial. Look, Purely and, financial. And I'm telling you this. Mm. Every one of us involved in this debate has an interest. Mm. Every sim... There's nobody. There's nobody mm. in this whole conversation who doesn't have an interest. Right. I have an interest. And what's your interest? My interest is the protection of Ghanaian cultural values mm. and the protection of the innocence of my children and the children of Ghana. Okay. That's my interest. And their interest is money. Their interest is money. It's financial. Simple. They cannot deny it. But how how much can we sell ourselves for? That's so that's what we should be asking CDD and Audrey Gajipo mm. and Techiwa Menu. Mm. Professor Techiwa Menu's son mm -hmm. was my mate in tech. At I his see. wedding, mm -hmm. he married a woman. She was excited and danced there. None of the so-called gay lobbyists mm -hmm. in Ghana mm. are practicing gays. So what's their interest if it's not financial? Mm. And I have asked them repeatedly mm. to point out, and you can put any of them on the phone line now. Mm. They should simply point out to you, either in Ghana's constitution mm. or in any international legislation, mm -hmm. where rights are confirmed. Because rights don't accrue in a vacuum. Hole. That's right. Rights accrue by way of being conferred mm. either in a constitution or in some kind of international treaty or legislation. That's right. They should show you any portion of the Ghana's constitution mm -hmm. that confers rights on the basis of sexual preference or sexual orientation. Absolutely none. This is a reality. And you know, they are unable to answer that question. The best they can go is to Article 17 of the constitution that says there shall be no discrimination. Yet mm -hmm. 17.4 mm -hmm. says that parliament can pass a law to discriminate against a particular group of people on certain basis. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and they choose to read portions of the constitution and not the entire constitution. So, Johnny, we, we need to begin to call out everyone. Like I said, President Akufado has got an interest in refusing to sign a bill. But, but, but wouldn't that hurt him politically and his party if indeed what you're saying is anything to go by? Because there are other voices who have said that, look, if the president doesn't do this, the mood of the country, 275 MPs endorsing this means that the entire country says, this is what we want. Then he takes the opposite direction. It will hurt him politically. But I've, been, I've been stating categorically for a few <clears throat> months now that the mm. president has checked out. The president has handed over power. He, he's, he's literally ceremonial in, in his functions. He's more interested in, in attending the State of the Nation's address and getting the presidential salute. He's interested in what's going to happen on the 6th of March tomorrow mm. and address the parade for the last time. Those are, he's more interested in the ceremonials. The real issue of mm. governing this country, he's checked out. I mean, as far back as early last year, he told mm -hmm. us that the problems of this country will be fixed by the, his the successor. Leader, right. mm. I mean, when a president tells you that, Look, in a proper jurisdiction, would have impeached him and asked him to go home. Mm. You know, but the president has checked out. He, he has absolutely no interest in mm. the issues that bother you and I as ordinary mm. Ghanaians. No. Well, parliament use it to third, you know, authority that you would have in the event that the president still, you know, pussyfoots about this, waiting on the Supreme Court, and if the Supreme Court continues, you know, because the, wind, the wheels of justice grind slowly, will Parliament do the two-thirds majority? Well, well, it is an avenue open to us. I am not the only sponsor. Right. I, there, there's eight of us. Mm -hmm. I would engage with them and engage with the coalition mm -hmm. that has worked with us, the National Chief Imam's Office, mm -hmm. the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, the Christian Council of Ghana, mm -hmm. the, the Catholic Bishops Conference, the Ahmadiyya Movement, the Coalition of Muslim Groups, Mm -hmm. uh, the National House of Chiefs. These are all persons and groups right. that have worked with us on this bill. Mm -hmm. And so I can't sit here and just announce without consultation with everybody what our what, whether we would explore that. But I believe strongly, I hold the personal view mm -hmm. that it is, a, it, is, it, is, it is an avenue we must look to explore. Mm -hmm. But again, 
the, the entire group will have to take a decision on it. But I think that we'll, for the sake of our children, we must be willing to have, for want of a better phrase, mm -hmm. borrowing from Canada, Japan, a showdown on mm -hmm. this matter with the president and, 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 and those in government mm -hmm. who, who think that family ties and financial benefits trump the innocence, the need to protect the innocence of Ghana's children. The National Peace Council, the boss, he was here on hot issues. He said they have not taken a position yet on all of what you are doing. How does that sound to you? The Peace Council is a disgrace and a shame. I've said this before and I'm saying it again. They've, they've why, why, why do you say they've, that? They've, they've, they've the, the Peace Council is one of the biggest problems of this country. They are mm. hypocrites, extremely hypocritical. Mm. We've seen the posture of the Peace Council. The Peace Council has become a very political organization. Mm. It should be disbanded for the sanctity of Ghana's peace. The Peace Council is a threat to our peace as mm. a country. That's a serious thing yes. to see. It's a bunch of hypocrites who have sold their conscience. Mm. Like, 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 like the way Esau mm. sold his birthright for a bowl of porridge. The men and women who sit on the Peace Council... Mm if they have conscience, and if they fear the gods that they say they serve and worship, mm. they should bow their heads in shame. They said they don't want to go beyond their remits, their mandate. They want to stay within their mandate. It's a shame and a disgrace that men and women of that caliber have mm. lost their balls. And that's why I said they, are, they, they, they serve no purpose and no use to this country. Mm -hmm. Look, we need to begin to call out institutions and individuals in this country who are failing this country. The Peace Council, mm -hmm. what did they say when eight Ghanaians were killed in the 2020 election? I have not heard them. It shows you how useless they are. <laughs> it shows you how useless they have become as an institution. Look, and we will sit down and continue to celebrate this mediocrity mm -hmm. until they create a disaster in our country. But some of us mm -hmm. are willing to begin to sacrifice our lives to bring sanctity into this country. And I was going there, your family, you have a young family. Yes. Are they safe? They are hid mm. under the wide wings and tabernacled mm. under the shadow of the Almighty. Because you have had to bear consequence. I mean, traveling out there, you can swipe your card, you can do this. There are too many restrictions on you. And, and I can imagine how your children will be feeling the brunt of something that they didn't bring on, but something that you went to bring on in the interest and protection of the future generation. How are you juggling all of it together? Sometimes don't you get your family telling you, more and more, more, leave it and let it go. Why have you taken on this fight? I, I'm grateful to God for the woman he gave me as a wife. She stood by me through this. I mean, she's physically, I mean, people have gone into her inbox threatening her i mean really yeah threats have been sent to her i've had to go and respond like send messages back to those to people and say people. look stop being a coward don't go after my wife come after me if it is me you want if, if you want to fight come after me stop 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 chasing my people my, my really wife. did that oh yeah, yeah i can show you i'm just going to show you uh just one example right of and you can read this i mean this is a screenshot okay you can read this so, so this is from Honorable Sam George's phone. It says, uh, Sam George it's, it's on Instagram. It was on Instagram. needs to be killed. Him and his family and everyone who agreed to this. Such people do not deserve to live. Whoa. When was this? This was 19 hours ago. Yes, I took this, this, this message. This, this, was, this was sent at me on Instagram by a person whose handle name is Enna Christ. E-R-N-E-R. A R N A R, mm. so it's anarchist. Anarchist, yes. C H I S T. Uh, this was I, I took this screenshot on on the second of March, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean he tagged me and put it, and so I got the notification. Um, they've gone at my wife and all mm -hmm. of that. My mm -hmm. children are young. Um, my first son has had a conversation with me about it, mm -hmm. and I've told him that posterity would would consider his father's actions noble. Right. And and I'm I'm confident he's done this. But John, let me tell you something. Tell me. As a young man, when I started a family, I mean, by God's grace, um I, I had what it took to have my wife go outside the country to give birth and right. have our kids. Right. right. But I took a decision. Mm. It wasn't pleasing to my wife at the time. I said to her that all my kids will be born in Ghana. 
You know why? No. When your children, mm -hmm. who are your legacy, have an alternative right. somewhere, right? You have no, you have no push, you have no drive. Mm. So people ask me what my drive is. My drive is my children because they are here. So they have no other citizenship. So if my kids were born in the U.S. or the U.K., mm -hmm. as many of my colleagues would have done, mm. I, I really wouldn't. I wouldn't take too much bother what happens right. in Ghana because, because they can always go. They have another national. They have another place they can go to. Mm. My kids have no anywhere my kids go to. They are going to be strangers. Boy, mm. mm. they are strangers. This is the only place they hold a citizenship of, right. and this is the only country. And and if today mm -hmm. I sit in a position to shape the future for my children. They have nowhere else to go. I need to fix this country. Right. I need to protect their future. Mm. We have too many people sitting in positions of influence and authority in this country mm. whose children have no connection to Ghana. Mm. They have alternatives. I have none. And I'll fix this country as best as I can mm. in my small way. And I hope other people will rise and fix their own small way right. so that collectively we can fix because this country. The, the Speaker of Parliament has been a strong tower in all of this. Yes. I mean, he's stated his position, he's never backed down, and he's seen it happen eventually. How does he feel knowing that the president is finally pussyfooting on, on this, what everybody expects that, okay, Parliament has finished their work, presidency, complete yours, and let's move forward. How does he feel? Has he it, it, given any it, indication? It, well, I haven't spoken to the speaker on this, and so I can't speak for right. the speaker, but from where I see it, it's mm. sad. People don't know that since last year, the speaker has been sued, and his, the speaker is bearing financial cost with his lawyer, Stadio Sorry, are representing the speaker. He's for, been sued by Amanda Odoi. Suit. Yes, for doing his job as speaker. There's an ongoing case that the speaker is having to pay lawyers mm. personally to represent him. He has been sued for doing his work. For doing his work. As, yes, yes, yes. For, on, for this on bill. This on this bill. On this bill. Yes. By a lady called Amanda Odoi. Yet another puppy of the pu puppet of the of the of the gay lobby. Slow, slow down. No, she's a puppet of the gay lobby. She's been funded and used by the gay lobby to do what she's doing. Techiwa Menu, Professor mm, Techiwa Menu, mm, mm. is on record to have told journalists on the twenty second of February mm -hmm. this year mm. that President Akufuado is the one who has asked them to go to court. Professor Techiwa Menu said President Akufuado mm -hmm. told them at CDD mm -hmm. that he is against the bill and has advised them and urged them to go to court to challenge the bill. I'm not saying this. Mm. Techiwa Menu told journalists this mm. at a press engagement at the CDD on the 22nd of February. Mm. So don't be surprised the things that are going on. Don't be. I mean, this is the country we live in. Mm. They concerns about the financial implications yes i want to go back to that conversation because a lot of people are asking here and they say look how else can we survive if we decide that we say okay we are going ahead with this where else do we go because we are back on our we are flat on our stomachs johnny I'll, I'll, there are two responses to this right uganda uganda's economy is smaller than ghana's economy right way smaller Uganda had a president for all his wrongs. The one right thing you can say about M27, Yuri Museveni, mm -hmm. is very mm -hmm. simple. He thinks that this is a mental aberration, which it is, mm -hmm. and has gone ahead to sign a very punitive law. In fact, Uganda's law will punish you with death. Death. Yes. Ours is talking three years maximum. Mm -hmm. Day is death. There have been all of these back and forth and bashing from all the other places, the EIU projects Uganda's economy to be the eighth fastest growing economy in Africa in 2024. That's Uganda's economy. Uganda is preparing to float a euro bond. So what has happened to Uganda? You have countries like Kenya mm -hmm. who, are, who are in the process. In fact, the Kenyan MP, George Kaluma, reached out to me for a copy of the bill in Ghana. Okay, so they can learn from it and he, see. He took our bill and just changed the Ghana and put Kenya. Finish? Yes. And that's what is in Kenya. And that's what Kenya has passed. Kenya has passed it? Oh, yes. Of course. Yes. Our law. Our, our, our bill. Our bill. Take the Kenya law and take Ghana's bill and see what it is. So if others are learning from and us, Ken what? And, and Kenya has gone ahead and is getting disbursements from the same IMF. Kenya is in an IMF program. So those who claim that all of a sudden our economy will collapse, 
First and foremost, the evidence shows that it is not true. Ghana's economy is not worth $700 million a year. Mm. Because $3.8 million over five years yeah. is what? $700 million. That's right. So the question we should ask ourselves, mm? Mm. Johnny, mm. is even how are we in this mess? Mm. Because it's not every government that automatically wakes up and goes to the IMF. You go to the IMF because you've messed up your economy. That's right. You need support. You need yes. help. So the people who messed up the economy, mm -hmm. instead of being humble enough and being repentant and contrite mm -hmm. on their mess of the economy, are rather being braggadocious and telling us mm -hmm. that eh, but the economy is messed up and the only way to fix the economy is to sell the innocence. The only thing we have left is the innocence of our children. We are selling it for 700. They have, they have collateralized get fund, mm -hmm. collateralized... Uh, 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 NHIS. NHIS. They've collateralized ESLA. Mm. Now they are going to collateralize for money the innocence of Ghana's children and Ghana's cultural heritage. Is that what we want? If you look at the redefinition of human rights, as Speaker Okwe puts it, there's now a broader perspective of what human rights are. And that's been one of the positions of those who are against this bill. They say, look, people have a right you must respect their rights. You cannot dictate how people have sex, for example. What do you say to them? Johnny, first and foremost, mm. there is still no legal document anywhere mm -hmm. that has redefined human rights to include sexual orientation. None. One. Mm. Two, this bill is not interested in people's rights or otherwise to have sex in a way and manner that they want. Johnny, I don't know what you did in your bedroom this night, though. <laughs> and, and, and you don't know what I did. Mm. How does anybody get to know what goes on in your bedroom? Except you mm. choose to come and speak right. about it. Nobody is going, there is, there is not going to be a police service that's going to be looking into everybody's room to see what they are doing or who they are doing. And there's a bedding of proof of prosecution in court beyond reasonable doubt absolutely there must be evidence of the act it is not just hearsay there must be evidence of the act so if you choose to go and record whatever you're doing in your bedroom and that falls into the hands of the public and law enforcement decides to prosecute you because it falls far of the law it is your own making right nobody you is, is chasing you about it mm. ah you know how many people smoke weed every day in ghana mm. Mm. It is you who gets caught with it. That's right. That gets prosecuted. Yes or no? Those who do it, those who use it to do quantum referral, <laughs> nobody is going to open their pots mm. and see what, is, what they use, what mm. leaves they used. Mm. But the real issue in this bill and the real thing that this bill is dealing with is advocacy. And even with the offense of homosexuality itself, when you are caught, there's the possibility of a fine. In fact, the fine is starts from 750 penalty units, which is just 3,000 Ghana cities. Mm, so mm. a first-time offender could most likely get a 3,000 Ghana CD fine mm. and walk. But the real intent of the bill mm -hmm. is to deal with advocacy. The likes those, of Tichiwa Menu and Audrey Gajipo, yes. Mm. And Amanda Odoi, deal with those kinds of people. Mm. Because these are people who themselves are straight, mm -hmm. but are taking money from the gay lobby to try and indoctrinate our children. You've seen what, I, on Twitter, they call her Abri Wanana, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Deborah Vanessa. Mm -hmm. You see what she did, the video of her in a school. Right. She, the school invited her on career day to come and talk about, and the school have asked them that if you want, to, you want an artist who has a career, mm -hmm. is it Deborah Vanessa you invite? But they go and invite her. Mm -hmm. And when she gets there, she's asked questions on career, and she decides to go into telling eight-year-olds that a man can love a man. And they should love anybody. That is a crime. It's a criminal offense mm. to groom children without the permission of their parents. In this case, without the permission of the school. Right. It is this kind of work or advocacy mm -hmm. that we are fighting. And for that one, once you do it, nobody needs because you can't do advocacy in your bedroom. Yes, it has to be advocacy public. will be public. Mm. Once you do it, there is evidence of it. 
That one, we don't find you. That mm. one, you go to jail. Minimum sentence, five years. But, but Sam, our jails are already choked. That's another argument. The jails are revolving door. People go in and people come out. Every day, there are people being freed but from then, their jails. But then our jail cells now, our jails now, if you look at our prisons, are choked. Yes. And that's one of the arguments that they've raised. That, look, why are you parking the place that is already choked? So why are we jailing people who went to steal, who are hungry? Mm. and went and stole a bunch of plantain or mm. stole a goat. Mm. We, we send them to the same jails. Why? Those people, don't they have rights? Don't they have a right to life? And can't you make the argument that because they were starving? This CDD, you see, when I tell you that their advocacy mm -hmm. is financial, because nobody is providing money mm -hmm. for advocacy, for community sentencing, for people who stole goats, mm -hmm. petty, petty thieves. Non-custodial sentences. That yeah. one, they are not going to advocate for it because there's no money in it. Mm -hmm. They won't advocate. Have you heard the CDD mm -hmm. and all of the professors, the gay lobby, have you heard them? If their real interest mm -hmm. is in pushing community sentence, non-custodial sentencing, mm -hmm. for what they call petty misdemeanors, why have they not launched a campaign vigorously? They say there's no money. There's no money. There's no money in it. it. Nobody, 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 is nobody, funding nobody's it. funding that. Nobody's funding that. Look, the things people are advocating for are things that money is in. Legalization of marijuana, there's money mm -hmm. in it homosexuality there's money in it mm. it is financial and we need to begin to call these people out for what they really are what their mm. real interest is and expose them for the Ghanaian people to know I can men man we call them man jaloin man jaloin yes in that man jaloin a drama let's let's again look at um the future I know you have to yeah. go for a meeting, but quickly, let's look at the future. Um, how do we nip this in the bud? Because people will always be born with effeminate features. People will always be there to convince. I mean, we did uh, Vox Pop and Bookum. I mean, we don't have too much time, so I'm, I may not be able to play while you're here. But they say, look, focus on the economic issues, bread and butter issues. We don't have food to eat. Our lights are going off. That's what you should be focused on, not these ones. This one, it doesn't concern you. Do people know how many laws Parliament has passed to deal with economic issues in mm. the past mm. years? Mm. We have. So it's not as though parliament is not doing any other thing and it's just LGBTQ we are talking about. We're doing every other thing as well. But you see, the people who make that argument mm -hmm. are either uninformed or intentionally myopic. Why do I say so? Tell me. When you look at the cost of LGBTQ to the countries where they have legalized and liberalized it, you realize that it will collapse Ghana's economy. It will? Yes. How? Right now, you have states in the U.S. that are clamping back because the cost for mental health for persons who've transgendered and persons engaged in LGBTQ, even in those countries where they have liberalized it, the mental health concerns and the cost to them for taking care of their mental health mm. is, is, is growing. The young, I don't know how to call him a boy or girl because he transgendered, who went into a classroom about mm. four or five months ago mm. in the U.S. Mm. and shot up 22 children. Yes, I remember that. I remember that. Mental condition from mm. transgender. Mm. So when people say this is, this is not a bread and butter issue, the safety of your children in their classroom, you think it's not a bread and butter issue? When, when people, are, when the state, look at how the NHIS is struggling. Mm -hmm. We now have to start dealing with an increase in mental conditions and depression and suicidal thoughts. Do you know what that does to the economy of the country? There are real... Look, people look at this thing as just a man and a man having private sex. Or a woman and a woman... Nah. Read, guys. Read. You have 1.4K people watching us right now on yes. Facebook. Uh, and I'm sure you've also heard the argument that, well, this will have financial implications on us as a country in terms of the cost elements. So, for example, a private member's bill cannot you know, push forward and, and uh, you know, a bill or a law, if you will, that will bring financial burden on, on the state. And that this particular one that you are fighting for will have financial burden on us. Uh, uh, what do you answer? What's your answer? When, when, when the constitution says financial burden, it's not talking about this voodoo economics done by Amin Anta and the guys at the Ministry of Finance. And again, I can tell you an authority. The people who sat to do this meeting, 
and come out with this document. Mm. We're not even up to 10. Most of the oh. direct, I'm telling you, I'm saying this on authority. Most of the directors, and if you read their documents, this is a finance no, 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 no. ministry listen, document, listen. Sam George. And I'm saying to you that the people who sat in the room to uh -huh. hold this meeting mm. were not up to 10. Read the second paragraph of the minister's document. Honorable Minister convened. So that's one. Honorable uh, Minister. Yes. Uh, meeting with the Chief Director and Two. Director of the Ministry. Three. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Governor. The Governor. Four. And the First Deputy Governor. Five. The light is. Uh, and the Commissioner and the, General. The Commissioner of General GRA. GRA. Six. Six people. Do you see any of the guys who do budgeting? Do you see any of the guys who do physical analysis at the Ministry of Finance in this? I spoke to people at Ministry of Finance. Mm. Many of them, the first time they heard about such a meeting was when this document came out. The people who do the fiscal impact analysis mm -hmm. at the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. were not mm -hmm. part of this. And so the point I'm making is this. Mm -hmm. Accepting LGBTQ mm. imposes a cost on us in our healthcare system. So, look, you can choose to say that if you, don't, if you block it, mm -hmm. there is the claim mm. that it will affect investment mm. if you allow it it also comes at a cost mm -hmm. so ask yourself which of the costs are you willing and ready to bear the cost mm -hmm. that sells the innocence of your children makes us lose our cultural identity values and tradition mm -hmm. and still imposes a huge cost on our healthcare system and on us mm. or the cost of saying that Look, this is what we stand for. This is who we are. Mm. And we've done this before. In 2011, mm -hmm. God rest his soul, Professor John mm. Evans Fifi Atamils, he looked David Cameron in the face right. and told him, if your British aid comes with LGBTQ constraints, mm. take your money. We don't want it. Well, we played that tape this Fantastic. Mm. Has the UK government ceased its bilateral relations with Ghana? No. Since 2011, has the UK government not continued to support activities in Ghana when you have a president that is bold? Mm. Bold, like we say in our national anthem, mm. to defend this country and stand for something. Mm. But when you have, when you have yes-men and puppets of the gay lobby run this country... Do you think the president is, is more bold, our president? On this matter, yes, the president has no balls. So, uh, we'll wrap up the conversation. Uh, many are also worried that you may be focusing too much on this matter to the detriment of your constituents who took you to parliament. That, look, they took you there to represent their interests. Now you have taken on the whole Ghana's problem and you put it on your shoulder. What is happening to the people in Ngo Prampram? They're doing a lot of work there. They know. We've, we've completed a classroom block in our, our, our model classroom block. There's nothing like it in any part of the country. I mean, a, a classroom block with, with flat screens mm. and, and for kindergarten. Okay. Flat screens and internet connectivity high, and air high condition. End, high end, uh, big, Absolutely. As we speak, we've started a second one in partnership with, 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 with a friend, a friendly foundation in Afina. Another, another classroom block is going on. This month, we are starting uh, a canteen in the Mata Eco cluster of schools. We are working. As an MP, my, my task is not just one. My right. task is multiple. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're doing all the various things. As we speak, this week we are paying fees again to, for children, uh, students who are going into tertiary school, about 25 of them, the mm -hmm. fees are being paid. Mm -hmm. And this is even at a time where I still have not received my education fund for 2023. My education fund mm. that comes to the MP right. for 2023 right. has not been but given to me. The finance minister has written that it should be paid to you. It still hasn't come. It has not come. 2023. And what was holding it? There's no money at Get Fund. Mm. 2023. I'm saying that the education fund for Ningo Pram Pram has not come. But the whole of 2023, in 2023, we paid over 70 people's school fees. And yet you... And you, in 2024, you, you, I'm you saying a time has not come. Yet we are doing the things that we have to do. Recently, we had to intervene in Ninsek, mm. you know, and get them water because water was not flowing. Mm. We're, doing, we're still doing our job. So the people of Ningo Pram Pram, and, and I'll tell you what, mm. my constituents are the ones who put me up to this. Right. I had town hall meetings. I had 18 town hall meetings before I brought this bill On to parliament. The LGBT. Before I brought it to parliament, 18. And, and they are in support. Look, you just need to run on social media. Mm -hmm. 
and see the comments people make from my constituency who say, that's our MP, we are proud of what he's doing. And Johnny, I beg you, I see you do polls from time to time. Mm. Run a poll on whether Ghanaians mm -hmm. support the position of Sam George and his colleague sponsors mm. on this bill or the president. We'll try and that. then run a poll mm -hmm. specific to Ningo Pram Pram, ask mm -hmm. people from Ningo Pram Pram to vote. And, and I'm, I'm willing to subject myself to this. All right on whether they are happy with my representation of them in parliament or not. Feel free to run those polls. Sam George for president, is that oh, something that you're... You there's, there's somebody, you see, Nassau, uh, Nassau just sent is our future president, Sam George. I'm asking, this is not the first one. It's a couple of them. My, because my, my, my because focus, I'm watching the live stream with them. Yes. All my, of my, the... my, my focus is on making sure that I do everything within my power mm. to make President John Dramani Mahama take the oath of office on the 7th of January, mm. 2025. I am committed to delivering Ningo Pram Pram and working in Greater Accra mm -hmm. to deliver again in excess of 20 seats mm -hmm. like we did four years ago for him and make sure that he's won. That's my focus right now. My focus is on retaining the mandate of the people of Ningo Pram Pram mm -hmm. and, and, and on, on retaining John Mahama to, to How to many the enemies have you made since you started this advocacy and push of this uh, uh, LGBT thing? Uh, like like the Rasta man, mm -hmm. thousand will hate you, thousand will love you. Mm -hmm. I've made some very powerful enemies, mm -hmm. but I've also made some very powerful friends. Mm -hmm. Johnny, mm -hmm. you know why no weapon will fashion against me will prosper? Tell me. You know the number of Ghanaians who wake up every morning and just say, God bless Sam George? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. number of God bless yous I've received mm -hmm. in the past two years. If nobody tells me God bless me again for the rest of my life and I even live to 90, mm -hmm. I have You enough. still have a, a lot in yes. store. And, and for me, mm. it is that goodwill. Mm -hmm. Look, I can show you messages. Just this morning, as I was coming, just before your call came in, right. a message came to me mm -hmm. from, from a very senior clergyman okay. who said to me, Sam, I will vote NDC be for the first time because of you. You get it? See? Look. Because, because, of, because of your advocacy and... Don't read his name, but no, just read, read his, his message. Name. I see. see. I see. He says, because of you, I'll vote for NDC. I'm coming to support you this time. Because of what you have done and with there your colleagues. There are people who come out and say, if you go and read you under Eugene Ahin's post, mm -hmm. Eugene Ahin, Ahin put out the president's That's statement. Right, statement yeah, when read under that post, a lot of MPP people say, we are MPP, but we disagree with the president. That's why when I started this interview, mm. I told you that this thing is not about NDC and MPP. This thing is not about the MPP as a political party. It's about President Akufuado mm -hmm. and a few other people in government who made themselves puppets of the gay lobby. Mm. And, and what, what would they gain, really? I've told you what it is. It's money it already for them. It's money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam George, I know you have to go. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Closing thoughts. I mean, everybody is watching. As I said, it's, it's, the numbers have been constant on social media. What do you say to them? They want to hear from you finally. There's, I, I, sorry, there's this gentleman. I'm, I'm sure that um, this gentleman keeps asking, what's the alternative if the president doesn't sign? We have answered that already, but just for his benefit. Article 106. Mm. Article 106 of the Constitution says that after the bill is transmitted to the president, mm. he has seven days to accent. If he doesn't accent within the seven days, mm. he must then notify parliament within 14 days the reason for which he is not accenting. Mm. He can choose to buy some more time by going to the Council of State, but that just gives him an additional 30 days. But then he must communicate to the press, to the parliament. When he communicates to parliament, mm. parliament can buy a two-thirds vote mm -hmm. of all members turn this into law and when we do that within mm. 30 days the president has no option than to accent it into law hmm. closing thoughts some i'm grateful to the Ghanaian some people say you grateful. are you are the president of the stubborn academy <laughs> <laughs> is it true i i, I don't know they should access lausu is the one who tried to confer that or, that that position on me when i stood up <laughs> against <laughs> her on the <laughs> registration of sim cards but let me just say that mm. um i'm grateful to the people of ghana mm -hmm. and and to the chiefs, mm -hmm. the traditional authorities, are clerics, mm -hmm. both traditional, Islamic, and Christian. Mm. And just the everyday Ghanaian who meets me in the shopping malls and walks up to me and says, Sam, we stand by you, keep doing this for us. I'm grateful to them for their prayers. Mm. My team and I, the coalition, we are extremely grateful for the support. Let's continue this fight mm -hmm. until we reach it. Like I said to you before mm -hmm. I walked into the studio, mm -hmm. 28 February, 
as a unique and iconic date in Ghana's history. That's right. By no by no orchestration, mm-hmm. this bill was passed on the 28th of February. Maybe maybe it may be a ten another ten year battle for mm-hmm. our full independence. Mm-hmm. But the cost of Ghana's independence, let's not forget that when Ghana was to gain independence, mm-hmm. people said it will come at a cost to Ghana. That's right. People said Ghana did not even have the human resource mm-hmm. to man the civil service because mm-hmm. it was largely by expatriates. It came at a cost. But Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah said, mm-hmm. independence now, not at a later date. Self-government now. Self-government now. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we are the better for it. And so it will come at a price. Let's not kid ourselves. Mm-hmm. It will come at a price. But we should be ready to pay that price for the thank sake you. of the innocence of our children. Thank you. Sam Nate George, MP for Ningo Pram Pram. Thank you for joining us in studio. Thank you.